Business Channel 8 presents New Skills for Living with your host, Tom Lavin, a healthy plan for healthy living. Hello and welcome to New Skills for Living, a show dedicated to healing and wholeness in our community. We're going to continue our series on addictions recovery. Those of you that have watched the show or you've seen the shows on my website, uh, you'll know that this year we've had two guests that uh, did really good shows talking about 12-step recovery. Dr. Tim Coughlin and Father Bill Wigmore spent time talking about how powerful those groups are and those steps are in helping people change their lives. However, there are other ways that people do recover from alcohol and drugs and other addictions, and those might be referred to as alternative therapies. And we have a great guest with us today who's going to talk with us about alternative ways of recovering from addictive disorders. Uh, our guest is Bill Weber. We're really glad to have Bill with us. He's been on the show before. Um, Bill is a licensed marriage and family therapist as well as a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. He has 27 years experience doing addictions counseling and psychotherapy and he has his own practice and from time to time as he's talking you'll see his website and his telephone number come up uh, so you can contact Bill uh, if you'd like to after the interview today. But Bill, it's really great to have you here back on New Skills for a Living. Thanks thank you, for Tom. being here. Yeah, thank you. And so Bill, let me just keep it simple and right from the beginning, can you tell us a little bit about alternative ways or alternative therapies where people find recovery from addiction? Well, yeah, let, me, let me start right off naming them, Tom. Uh -huh. uh, I, I mean, there's HAMS, which is, which is harm reduction, abstinence, and moderation. There's the uh, life, wing, life Ring Secular. You can find all these on the website just mm -hmm. by typing the name in as I say it, mm -hmm. uh, as I pronounce it, into the search engine. Um, there's, of course, moderation management. There's rational recovery. There's secular order of sobriety. Mm -hmm. There's smart recovery. And then, of course, uh, women for sobriety. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, and then uh, 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 let's not leave out 12 steps. Because mm -hmm. what I'm here to let people know is um, they all are effective. They all work evenly well. Uh, as they say in the business, they're all winners and they all deserve prizes. Uh -huh. Everybody, Everybody's effective. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess one of the things you're saying too, Bill, is one size doesn't fit all, huh? One size doesn't fit all, and we know that from looking at dropout rates. Mm. AA works great for the people that go there. Very, very effective. They have a high dropout rate from their own triennial reports, anywhere from 68 to 95 percent in the first year. Mm -hmm. the, the ones I talked about have a dropout rate in the 40s, between 40 and 45 percent dropout mm -hmm. rate mm -hmm. in the first year. So they all have dropout rates. Mm -hmm. We're really looking at the people who stay, are they helped? And the, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Because for the same reason we know from AA is that they're there, they're sober, and they're saying it works. Mm -hmm. Evidence shows them to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's different about some of these is um, we have now have alternatives for the strict abstinence approach. In the beginning, there was AA. One of the first contenders for uh, AA was actually Women for Sobriety. Mm -hmm. That's one of the older ones. Mm -hmm. That's an abstinence-based approach. No drinking at all, just mm -hmm. like AA. Later came Rational Recovery. Rational Recovery is an abstinence-based approach. Mm -hmm. But not everyone wants abstinence and not everyone will work toward abstinence, even if you mandate it. Mm -hmm. Some people want to try to control their drinking. And some people can achieve that, as evidenced by moderation management, which is an only abstinence-based, I mean only a moderation-based mm -hmm. controlling your drinking yes. program. Mm -hmm. Whereas hams and life ring are more experimental. So in harm reduction, people get to choose, do you want to moderate your drinking 
or abstinence. And we find that people who are given the choice and find they can't moderate their drinking are more willing to work to an abstinence-based approach. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, Bill, what else can you tell us about some of these other alternative therapies beyond Alcoholics Anonymous? Well, the one thing about them is that they're all shown to work. Mm. And, but w when we start talking about it, w w it, it leads us into talking in the direction of what's called evidence-based treatments. And that what we wind up focusing on the group itself, right? Which is, of course, you have to know the group mm. if you're going to go to it. Sure. But the group is actually secondary to the client. We've lost the direction when it comes to listening to our clients. Mm -hmm. um, we can become advocates for our favorite program and not listen to the clients. And actually, um, some of my early training was how to get people, overcome people's to objections to attending AA. Yeah, to kind of and steer them in a certain way. And Bill, this has been a great first segment. It's gone really fast. And so right after this brief break, we're going to continue to talk with Bill Weber about alternative therapies. Well, and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with Bill Weber about addiction recovery. Um, I do want to remind you that Bill's interview will be up on my website, as well as all of the other um, interviews. Um, that are up on my website in terms of the addiction recovery program. And then I also want to show you the newsletters that go uh, with my, actually on your screen, you just saw Bill's website up on your screen. And so please feel free to contact Bill for some more information. I think later in the show they'll be pulling up my website, uh, which is www.easeap.com. And uh, there are over 20 television shows that we've done here on New Skills for Living that are on the website. So if you want to see Bill's interview, please go to the website. And then also, uh, just to remind you, there are over 80 newsletters on the website that deal with addiction, recovery, communication, gratitude, depression, anxiety, stress, uh, family relationships, all those kinds of topics. And they're free of charge for you to pull up or to share with friends. All right, Bill. Well, that was a great first segment. So in the second segment, you were talking about practice evidence therapies. Evidence evidence-based yeah. uh, 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 treatment. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where the, the industry focus has gone to make sure that the therapist or the provider or the person who's providing the treatment is doing a, a, a treatment that's been shown to be effective. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and all these groups have. What that puts the emphasis on is, am, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? It's focusing on me, when the, the provider, the therapist, when really the focus is the client, mm -hmm. the person with the addiction. Everyone's mm -hmm. addiction is, that's the most important thing to them. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get over it, the most important thing to you is getting over it. Mm -hmm. Not what treatment you're getting. Mm -hmm. So you don't really care if it's AA, or rational recovery, or SOS, mm -hmm. as much as does it fit into what yeah. you think will yeah. help you. Yeah. Which is really what empathy is about, is walking a mile in someone else's shoes. And so instead of like someone forcing someone to fit into a box or fit into a certain way of doing things, I guess you're saying, Bill, really listening to the person and finding out where they're coming from and what they believe will help them recover from their addiction. We, we know that's the, that's mm -hmm. the most effective mm -hmm. thing in change. Uh, the the overemphasis has been to focus on the therapist mm -hmm. and the treatment. Like what the therapist is doing like to the client. Or, to yeah. the client, uh -huh, uh -huh. rather than uh -huh. how the client is taking this and reacting. And are they saying this is helping me? Because mm -hmm. if they're saying it's not helping them, the object is not to talk them into mm -hmm. how it will be helping, but to change, to offer yeah. them something off of the menu. Sure. And yeah. change your approach to what fits their worldview. Now, we have that when we talk about we're going we're to accommodate your culture. 
-hmm. or an accommodation religion. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, 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 evidence-based treatment, um, well, we're, that kind of goes out the window because yeah. now we're doing it through evidence-based treatment. Uh -huh. I like the word, I like to turn it around, and so it's evidence-based practice mm -hmm. or practice-based evidence. Mm -hmm. So we're collecting evidence on, is this helping you? So we want to score that every session. At the mm -hmm. beginning of every session, I hand you a sheet. And you're gonna sh you're gonna score on that sheet how you're doing individually, mm -hmm. interpersonally, mm -hmm. in the things that are important to you to progress on. Yeah. And at the end of each session, you're going to rate me mm -hmm. on my approach. Did we talk about what you wanted? Mm -hmm. um, is, is is this beneficial? Did I leave anything out? Mm -hmm. So things like that. So I can adjust what I'm doing to benefit you. Yeah, so that it, you make sure it's working, huh, Bill? It's, uh, we want to make sure it's working and yeah. you as the client determine what's working, yeah. not me as the therapist. Yeah, great, great information. And right after this brief break, we're going to hear more from Bill Weber. Hello, and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with psychotherapist uh, Bill Weber about addiction recovery. And I do want to show you Bill's book. Um, it's very popular. It's helped a lot of people. The Natural Process of Quitting Forever. Explicit Instructions. Who Controls Your Hands? And so, since we're talking about alternative ways of, of uh, recovering from alcoholism and drug abuse, we want to ask Bill right now, like, Bill, can you kind of share, share with us a little bit about your approach in, in the Quitting Forever approach? Yes, it, it, quitting forever is, is actually trans-theoretical. It's mm -hmm. heavily intru influenced by um, motivational interviewing and Prochesca and De Clemente's stages of change. Um, it, it's it's a, certainly a, a cognitive behavioral approach. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very individual approach. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's certainly influenced by smart recovery, rational recovery, both. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also in, uh, influenced by ACT in that in rational recovery, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to wind up fighting thoughts in your mm -hmm. mind as uh, well as uh, 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 smart recovery based on uh, cognitive therapy. You're going to dispute irrational beliefs. But we know by ACT that can leave you very, very conflicted as you're always arguing with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if we use, if we bring that into mindfulness, to where instead of defeating these thoughts, you're with what you've created, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to abstain because mm -hmm. you're not fighting anything, mm -hmm. you're living with it. Yeah. Um, we're not really calling you an alcoholic, but we're not fighting with you. Mm -hmm. It's really finding out what works for you and how to apply that. Okay. So, so in Quitting Forever, um, it's not the, I used to be solid, oh, I'm not going to see you unless you're interested in quitting forever. But now I've learned that that is an error. Some people do better if you give them what they want, which is, I want to start out trying to moderate my drinking. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. people do better and they're actually able mm -hmm. to moderate their drinking, especially when you show them the high effects of, of BACs, uh, blood alcohol mm -hmm. content, on their health, on what it does to their brain, and how it actually over 0.05 leads them into sedation. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really make them happy mm -hmm. like, like they want to be. Mm -hmm. People who achieve that um, bring their drinking down. People who aren't able to achieve that and keep intoxicating themselves are often more willing to mm -hmm. try abstinence mm -hmm. and work on abstinence and many people achieve mm -hmm. that some people now are willing to go to AA that they haven't achieved um, moderation mm -hmm. uh, other people will try one of the other um, self-help groups mm -hmm. other people um, contrary to what they tell you in the literature some people don't do well in groups mm -hmm. and like the individual do-it-yourself approach mm -hmm. so I talk about and use all of the um, groups, the alternative groups. Mm -hmm. I encourage people, if that's what's going to help you, check them out and use that. Mm -hmm. We can fit what we're doing in with that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want any of them, there are reasons not to attend groups. Now, one of them is the effect it can have on the relationship with your partner. 
your significant other, your wife. Mm -hmm. If you're in recovery groups, you're not with your wife. Mm -hmm. You're not with your other. Mm -hmm. Substance abuse, alcohol dependency is like infidelity mm -hmm. in that you're no longer emotionally connected with your wife. You have two loves. You love your wife and you love the booze. Mm -hmm. You love the dope and your love is divided. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're not with your significant other. Or if you are, it's under the influence. So you can't really be attentive. You can't be reliable. You're certainly not emotionally accessible. Mm -hmm. And that has a profound effect on your relationship. So people now wind up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cure that. I'm going to make that better by going into recovery group. But now you're not there for your, for your spouse. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it, marriage and family therapy, couples therapy, is one of the effective approaches to substance abuse. Mm -hmm. It's often the one that's talked about the least. Mm -hmm. We talk about these as support groups, hams, Life ring, you can all mm -hmm. get a support group on the website. What about your significant other as a support? Mm -hmm. That can be a very important support. Sure it is, yeah. Very dramatic support and more real than a recovery group. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be with your significant other, hopefully for the rest of your life, unless you let alcohol and drugs destroy your relationship, which they're capable of, of doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important that you take a look at what's helping you. Mm -hmm. Are recovery groups helping you? Then go to recovery group. If they're not helping you, we want to detect that early so you can stop going into recovery, at least that one, and try a different one or a different approach. Because nothing works better than what works for you. Right, exactly, Bill. That's, that's really some good advice I want to mention again. Bill's book is entitled Quitting Forever. Um, might want to look it up and get this book. Very helpful to a lot of people. We'll see you right after this brief break. Hello and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with psychotherapist and addictions counselor Bill Weber about addiction recovery. Uh, Bill, we started off this show, you were talking with us about various types of recovery programs Let's go back through those, and why don't you give us an idea of what they offer to people? Yeah, the reason I'm, I'm happy to do that is because they're all on the web. Uh, the reason I picked these um, out, of, out of, of other ones is that uh, they all have uh, blogs and support groups you can participate mm -hmm. on the web. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you type in the names I, um, as I've written, as I say them, mm -hmm. write them down and, and type that in your search engine, I know you can get there because I've done it. Mm -hmm. uh, re remember the HAMS, harm reduction, abstinence, and um, uh, um, moderation. Mm -hmm. um, HAMS gives you that choice. And um, it's, a, it's a very supportive group. Um, they're mostly on the internet. There are places that they meet. Um, it's uh, a very experimental. Mm -hmm. So in that experimental for you, you're looking at what works for you. Um, life ring secular approach is another one. Secular re life ring secular recovery. They actually have groups in Vegas, mm -hmm. and they're court approved. Mm -hmm. So um, they're big in California. Mm -hmm. They are a secular approach, and they have a website. Uh, and a support group that you can get there by going to the website. Now, when you say secular approach, Bill, what do you mean? It means AA is actually a um, supernatural religious approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the uh, Ninth Circuit Court in 2007 has ruled now for the state of Nevada that you no longer can be mandated to AA because of its religious nature. Mm -hmm. And why are we fighting over that if we're really talking about what helps the client? Mm -hmm. And what helps the client is what they find helpful. So a secular approach is an approach to where there's not really talk of a higher power. No, no talk mm -hmm. about higher power mm -hmm. or any, anything supernatural. Mm -hmm. um, 
But now, some of them are. If we look at women for sobriety, women's sobriety has a spiritual component mm -hmm. in it. So it's an alternative to AA. It's primarily secular with a spiritual component. Mm -hmm. Smart recovery is, and it's S-M-A-R-T. Just type in smart recovery. Mm -hmm. Smart recovery comes from Albert Ellis, the Albert Ellis Group, okay. rational um, emotive behavior therapy. Mm -hmm. They're still active, and, they, and there's four hospitals that endorse them. Mm -hmm. um, smart recovery was what came out of rational recovery. Rational recovery originally came from Albert Ellis mm -hmm. and a rational emotive behavior cognitive therapy. Mm -hmm. And he became very prioritary and stopped using cognitive therapy and is now just priority on the um, internet. Mm -hmm. So he's a pay for participation site. I see. Now, Bill, let me, let me mention to you, we've got about 20 yeah. seconds here, okay? So keep going. SOS is uh -huh. um, from, um, c comes from um, Christopher, um, he, it's secular order of sobriety, mm -hmm. and that came from um, free inquiry. He typed a paper and started a support group. It's now 20 years yeah. old. Well, Bill, we really appreciate you spending time with us today and sharing your expertise. The show has gone so fast. Uh, we're in the process of wrapping up right now. It's been great to have Bill Weber with us. I think up on the, up on the television set, you'll see uh, the website, EASEAP.com. Bill's show will continue to be available on that website. Um, we want to ask you and encourage you to join us. And then we'll see you again next month as we continue to take a look at addiction recovery. And thanks to Bill Weber.